My name is Exxon, and I'll be talking to you about the Proxy SQL, a high performance MySQL proxy. A uh, uh, little bit about me. Like I said, my name is Exxon Berisha. I have worked in a various uh, companies in the United States. You can see my experience, some of the logos, I, I put them uh, back here. Uh, also, I have done a few internships during my college. I have been living in the States for about 15 years now. Uh, yeah, happy to be here, and thank you for showing up. Uh, this is the agenda, what we will talk in, uh, about today. Uh, I will explain a little bit what is Proxy SQL. Uh, I will show some of the scenarios when to use Proxy SQL. Uh, I will explain what is multiplexing and connection pooling. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the Proxy SQL query rules, uh, a little bit about the automatic uh, MySQL failover, and at the last, I will talk about sharding and query re re rewrite. Uh, okay, so what is Proxy SQL? As you can see there, it's a high, it's an open source, a high performance tool. It sits in in front of the MySQL. Uh, it's a GitHub project. It's open source. It's free. It has you can uh, see the link up there. It has about 5.1 stars, and I actually contributed a little bit to the project. So I have a little bit, a pull request that got accepted, and it's in the code. Okay, so I will explain when to use the Proxy SQL. Let's say, for example, you have a startup and you start a company and you have one web app server and uh, you have a connect MySQL uh, database connection. It's one of the most widely used uh, in the world. Uh, so, for example, when you start, you probably don't need my uh, Proxy SQL or anything. You can just, you have one app, you have a few users, and you can directly connect to the MySQL. So it's, it, it, at the beginning, it's not a big deal because you have only a few users. Let's say after a couple of months or a couple of years, you start growing the user base. So now, instead of one app server, you might have two app servers in this case. They also talk to the MySQL database. Again, it's not a big deal. You have only a few hundred users, and uh, you can, like, continue life happily and not a big deal. However, let's say you start growing your user base. Let's say you have, I don't know, hundreds of app servers, like maybe like a thousand of app servers because you have a lot of users. The website is getting more interested and you have a lot of users. Now in this case, if you connect to one MySQL database, it's not gonna scale because the queries will be slow, you might have downtime, and your users are going to be pissed off, and they won't come to your site anymore. So, okay, how to do, how to make uh, MySQL better for more users? That's when the Proxy SQL comes in. Uh, one of the big features of the Proxy SQL that it's MySQL aware. So it's not whatever proxy, it actually understands MySQL queries, so, and, and it's designed specially for this job. Uh, so in this case, you have one uh, proxy SQL. However, you can actually even have three, just in case one fails, and you can connect to either one of them. It doesn't matter which one. You can, you can take one out of the rotation for the maintenance. You still have two, like if, someone, if a proxy SQL fails, you have a different one, and it's actually, then you can scale, because now you have three, three of them, and you can have more web app servers connecting uh, to it. Uh, yeah, so uh, I will talk, uh, now I'll, I'll explain some of the features why you should use it, like why, why you use it. One of the features is uh, mul uh, multiplexing. Uh, you can read that, what multiplexing is. Uh, I copy-pasted that from Wikipedia just to understand, but I'll explain in depth why it's important. Uh, multiplexing is, so you can connect to the proxy SQL. It has like, you can uh, have hundreds of connections. However, from proxy SQL to MySQL is going to be like a, a fraction of that, maybe 10%. So this actually shields MySQL so you, you don't overload it and it doesn't go down. And that's what we're multiplexing is. It's a channel where you can take a lot of connections and you can only have two or three to MySQL because it uses the same connection. It doesn't waste resources and that's how you can protect uh, MySQL better. So that's why it's really important. Uh, okay, some of the query, like another feature is why, why Proxy SQL, it's really a big deal. It's because you can actually distribute the queries 
uh, read-only databases. Let's say you have one read-write MySQL, and now that is getting overloaded because you write to it and you read from it. However, you can have replicas, and you can tell Proxy SQL by default, okay, if it's a read query, go to the replica, don't go to the primary. And then you can actually have two or more or, or, or ten or, or hundreds of the, of the replicas, and then that's how Proxy SQL, it's a, like I said before, it's a proxy, it's a MySQL aware proxy, so it actually knows based on the query that, that you're sending, it's going to know if it's read only or read write. And actually, uh, one of, for my previous experience, we, uh, we actually had a, an issue. One of the, one of the clients, was, so, some of the developers, they actually didn't write a good query, so query was taking a long time, and uh, they were having a flash sale. So in in middle of the flash there, we were like, oh, but let's find what what query is, is causing a problem. And we found the exact query, and we're like, okay, if we see, it, we told the proxy SQL, if you see this query, send it to the replica only, and then it uh, it offloaded the load from the from the primary, and the performance was much better. And you can also always add another replica, then it's just going to distribute there, uh, and you can actually pick which queries you want to use. Uh, let's say you want a specific query, you can send it to the replica, you can, have, uh, you can have designated only bad queries go to the certain replica so it doesn't impact the, the primary. Uh, another feature that it does, it's automatic failover. So let's say you have, you have a MySQL database, and as we know, it, it can crash uh, without any notice. You, it, it, it suddenly doesn't start working. The, the MySQL goes red, and, and what the users do, they, they, they're probably going to get pissed off at you because MySQL is down, they cannot create a profile or what have you. So you, all what you need to do is just make one of the replicas read right, and then Proxy is going to be like, okay, you are the new primary here, so you don't have to worry about as a developer, you only talk to the Proxy SQL. You don't care like which is write and which is read, you can only talk to the proxy SQL, and then proxy SQL does the magic. You just have to configure it earlier, obviously. But proxy SQL does the magic and says, okay, you are reading it right now that I'm going to be talking to you. Uh, so, okay. This one is uh, actually one of the best features that I think that the proxy SQL has uh, because it can have one. Uh, one database or schema per customer. Uh, okay, let me see next slide. Okay, so I've had a lot of questions before, like how do you design a, a database when you have a lot of customers? Let's say one customer or one client, you create one database per, per client or per customer. And in that case, uh, in that case, the, you have a lot of clients, and you, you're going to need to create a lot of databases. Eventually, you're going to run out of the, of the memory, you're going to run out of the capacity, because you have millions, millions and millions of users. So eventually, uh, you're going to have to somehow split, because one MySQL doesn't actually support like maybe even billions of, of databases, and you actually need to use that. So. That's when the proxy SQL comes to rescue. You can actually tell proxy SQL, okay, if it's a customer or a client one, for example, and, and you have you can have the query rule that says, okay, the clients from one to ten go to the specific MySQL server. Uh, if, you, if 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 the client is the sorry, if the client it's uh, number twenty, go to the specific MySQL different MySQL server. If the client is number thirty go to this specific MySQL server. Now, if one of the MySQL fails, at least not all your website fails because it's only a specific number of customers that actually fail. And like that, you can actually grow user base. You can have millions and millions of users and you just, you just need to add a rule and say, okay, client number 100 to 200 go to this specific MySQL database. Let's say you have a huge client uh, that actually uses most of the most of the MySQL, then you can just specify here, hey, you can tell Proxy SQL, if you see this database name, go to the specific MySQL server. So you don't actually, you can kind of control and, and grow slowly. 
uh, so, so your startup can actually scale. Uh, that's it. Uh, do you guys have any questions? I specifically finished a little bit earlier, so I have like, leave, leave some room for questions. Any questions? I'd like to ask, in terms of implementing this proxy SQL mechanism, in your experience, uh, can you identify one of the most notable drawbacks, if any, during that process, implementing such mechanism in your current architecture or something alike? Because I'd like to get some details on that. Specific drawbacks, uh, I would say, so it supports sharding, it, su it supports a database sharding, but if you have a huge table, currently it doesn't support to shard the actual table. One table has to be inside one MySQL server. But if you have multiple databases, then you can have uh, different uh, MySQL servers. That's, I would say, one of the drawbacks currently. Maybe they, imp well, they will implement that in the future, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but in terms of the configuration, it's, it's relatively easy. It's a configuration file, and then in a configuration file, you can say, okay, like I said, if you see this specific query, go here. You can just configure it. Uh, it's it's pretty, pretty simple. Or if you see this database, you can have, it, it, it supports different uh, ways to shard or split. There is one, if you see this user, if you see this database name, if you see this query, a, a different feature. So that's why it's, it's really good because it knows and understands my SQL queries. So as long as you just say, okay, if you see this query, go to my SQL B or, or C or whatever you have, uh, whatever you name it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, right. Yeah. That, well, that is correct. Uh, if you say a speci if you see the specific query, send it to the specific. Now, if the query changes, it, you're going to have to write a new rule. However, you can also say if the query starts with this, uh, if this like maybe like the first I don't know ten words of the query start with this, everything behind it, don't worry about it. Like you can use a regex to specify which queries go to which which database. Uh, can you measure the delay queries on the SQL server and then reconfigure the proxy to handle those delay queries in a different uh, database? Uh, so so the, you mean about the queries that are not yeah, performing in, as in good? Yeah, in MySQL you can see delayed queries. I mean, can you reassign those uh, in the proxy? Uh, yes, that is, that is correct. Uh, if you see a query that, are, that is not performing as good, you can just say, okay, this query, go to this MySQL server, the read-only. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can, you can do that, uh, certainly. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I think we're good. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate being here. Thank you.